Welcome back guys. Today we are going to be taking an in-depth look at the Minecraft forestry mod. If you are new here, my name is Javier and I aim to give you a full and easy to follow tutorial on all things modded for Minecraft. If you have any further questions or there's something that I may have missed, you can either join the Discord, which there will be a link down in the description for, where we have a designated channel for modded help, or feel free to leave a comment here and I will try my best to answer any queries you may have. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Today we are going to be looking at forestry farms. There are technically three types of farms. There are managed and manual and then the larger farm multi-blocks. So first of all we're going to be looking at the managed and manual farm. There are seven different types of farms. You have the arboretum which is a tree farm, the farm which is a crop farm, the mushroom farm for mushrooms, the gourd farm for melon and pumpkins, the infernal farm which is for neverwort, the chorus flower and ender lily farm which is the ender farm and the peat bog which makes peat. So to make the arboretum this is going to be four glass, three golden electron tubes, a flexible casing and a basic circuit board. To make the crop farm it's going to be the same but you're going to need bronze electron tubes. For mushrooms this is apatine electron tubes, for good farms it's lapis electron tubes, for the infernal farm it is blazing electron tubes, for the ender farm you're going to need ender electron tubes and for the peat bog it is obsidian electron tubes. Now if you do want to know how to make these electron tubes, the flexible casing or the circuit boards etc, I actually done this in my first forestry video and I will put a link above for that now for you in case you haven't already seen it. If you want to then get a manual version of this where you have to set everything up yourself you can then just put this managed version into a crafting table and it will give you the manual version. Now I don't see a reason why you'd ever want to do this because it does it all for you with the automatic ones. So first of all here is the size of all of them. They're all exactly the same size. You need to power these. For example, here I'm using the peat-fired engine. This is the arboretum. You place it down like this and inside you can fill it with fertilizer, dirt over here, and then saplings. So it does have a north, east, south and west slot, which means that you can put a different sapling in each of the four directions. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do this, you can mix and match, or you can have it all as oak saplings, for example. This will then have the output here, for example, dirt and jungle wood, etc. And you will also need some water pumped in to actually make this work. Once you place it down, it will automatically start putting the dirt down as hummus, and it will start planting and harvesting the trees. This is the crop farm here and this is going to be able to do any sorts of seed crops. Again, you can put the dirt in, it's going to give the output here with water and carrots, potatoes, seeds, etc. with fertilizer. This one is going to do this like this. It will also automatically place the water and the farmland and it will also till the soil for you. So it literally does everything you need it to do. Over here we have the mushroom farm and I'm not sure if this one will actually need a certain light level you put mycelium or podzol in here rather than dirt and I have put the mushrooms in it seems to be working but we haven't got any output here yet so maybe this will actually need a certain light level for this one. Over here you have got the peat bog and you're going to want to put bog earth into this one rather than dirt that is made of a bucket of water some sand and some dirt and then this is actually going to give you peat and again you put water and fertilizer in here. Here we have the gourd farm which for some reason won't seem to let me put anything in in this one but it should actually be for pumpkins and melons. If anyone else can actually find out a way to get this working please let me know or it may be a bug at the moment. Over here we have the neverwort farm which is the infernal one and you're going to want to put soul sand down for this one. It doesn't need water but you can fill it with water still I believe which I have here. And you're going to want to put never water in here, which is going to give you it here. Lastly, for the managed farms, you've got the ender farm. You can use this for chorus flowers or ender lilies. And this is going to want end stone. And that's going to give you the chorus flowers, etc. here, which is pretty cool. So as we had with the managed farms, you are going to need a different tube for each one. And this is going to be the exact same with these multi-block forestry farms, which are shown here. Now, the multi-block forestry farms are going to take a few different items. You're going to need the farm block, 
And these will come in a variety of different materials. You have the standard one, which is made with stone bricks in the middle, copper ingots, some slabs, and a tin electron tube. And the only difference between these is the material here in the middle. The slab you can use can be anything you want. So we have mossy ones, cracked ones, bricks, smooth sandstone, chiselled sandstone, never brick, chiselled stone bricks, quartz, chiselled quartz, and pillar quartz. You also have the farm hatch, and this is where you're going to want to input and output your items from the farm. This is going to be two tin gears, a trap door, and a farm block. Then you have the valve, which is where you're going to put in your liquids, which is going to be two glass, a tin gear, and a farm block. Then you have the gearbox, and that's where you're going to pump in your electricity, and that is three tin gears and a farm block. Now, a forestry farm, the minimum size you have here is a three by four. So the third level here, you can't place any of these parts. You can only place farm blocks. But on the bottom level, the second level, and the top level, which you can't see here, you can put the valves, hatches, and gearboxes wherever the hell you like. There is also the farm control, which you can use with a lever on each side to then stop and start the farm from actually working on each individual side, which is really cool. So say if you are using crops on north and south and you're using saplings on east and west but you want to turn off the east side you can use a farm control on the east side and use a lever to turn off that side only this is made with two redstone a gold electron tube and a farm block if you have made it correctly it will then show this bar here you can see if we break one of these here that disappears so as soon as you place it you know if the farm is correct or not and then when you right click you can then see inside so you can fill it with water by any means. You then have your north, east, south and west. You're going to want to put a, it will dictate to you by whatever circuit board you've got in there, by how this is actually going to be laid out. Fertilizer, you put your dirt and ground items in here. For example, for a reed farm, it would be sand or dirt and seeds, etc. You're going to put dirt. This is then where you put in the saplings or seeds, etc. that you're going to want to output. And then the actual output you get here is everything that the farm has produced. And you can see here when it's working, what you actually want to do is put stone bricks equal to here. And this is actually where the farm is going to automatically place either the farmland for you or the hummus. It will automatically make hummus out of the dirt you put in, by the way. This is the smallest size here. And if I show you in the forestry manual, it does actually have, if you go into farming and then farm layouts, you can see there's small, medium, medium, large, large, and very large. This is the small one we've got here. And then you can see how big it can get. So these red squares here are where you would put the stone bricks, which it would then place the dirt on top of. And this is the farm size here. And you see here it would be a width times length times height five by five times four you will of course need to put your circuit board into the farm and that will be removable with a soldering iron so you can get your soldering iron and just left click it on there to remove it then if you want to actually configure a circuit board you're going to want to get your soldering iron right click it and want to put in for example a intricate one which will be able to do all four sides scroll over here to automatic farm and then you're going to want to put in your tubes to north east south and west and this is going to dictate what kind of farm you get on each side now i do have the corresponding tubes here if you use a copper one this is going to give you succulent farms tin is reed farms bronze is crop farms gold is arboretums for trees diamantine is cocoa obsidian is for the peat bog blazing is for infernal farms, which is never wart. Rubberized is for rubber, and this is for use of the IC2 mod, or Industrial Craft 2. Emerald is an orchard, which will harvest fruits for you. Apatine is for mushrooms. Lapis is for gourds. And Ender is for Ender, so Ender lilies or chorus farms. All of these tubes can be made in the Firmonic Fabricator. And for a copper one, it would be five copper and two redstone. You put in some glass or sand here with some electricity and it will heat up the glass and then give you these tubes. The same goes for tin. 
in the fermionic fabricator, it's five tin. For gold, it's going to be five gold, and it's the exact same for all of them. Once soldered into the circuit board, they cannot be removed. So you can remove the circuit board of a soldering iron from your farm. However, you can't actually remove the individual tubes from the circuit board once they are in. So if you do ones wrong, you will have to then make a new one. That is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do have any further questions regarding forestry farms, please either do feel free to join the Discord. There is a link down in the description. You can also leave a comment below and I will try my best to help you out with any queries you may have. Next week's video will be all around bees, trees, butterflies and breeding, which is probably going to be the most exciting video out of this series. Thanks again guys and I will see you in the next one.